Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin. Well, I've got a couple things that I need to accomplish today before the weather starts to turn cold once again. We're actually having a beautiful day today, but they're actually predicting tomorrow night and the night after that, possible snow. So it's been getting down into the low 30s, upper 20s overnight lately, and that has made me realize that I can no longer just be running our garden hoses everywhere for the water that we need. The only outside faucet that we have is in our actual well house. So during the warm months, we just run long hoses everywhere. But over winter, that causes a real problem. Now, most of the time, most of our animals are pretty small. So uh, just carrying some buckets of water over the winter isn't a big deal. Uh, the pigs are typically gone by that point. But this year we have Hope, our Jersey milk cow, and she drinks a lot of water. She drinks sometimes 30 or more gallons a day. So hauling that many just buckets of water would get old real fast. She's got a 125 gallon tank that we use for water, which in the summer has an automatic float valve on it, but we're not gonna be able to use that over the winter. So I got to thinking that I bought these water tanks a couple years ago. Honestly, we were gonna set up a water catchment system, which we still plan on doing off of our cow barn but I thought maybe I can use this over the winter on the tractor. I can bring it over to the well house, fill it up, and then come up with some way that I can fill up her tank from this. So that's what I'm going to work on first today. I think it should be pretty easy. I went to the hardware store and bought some pieces that I think are going to work to get this going. Let me go grab them. All right, the first thing I need to do is take the, the spigot off of the tank itself so that we can add the extra parts to it that I think are gonna help us out. So let's do that first. I found that the easiest way to do that is to actually tip this over. And once it's tipped over, this should actually unscrew pretty easily. When it's tip down the normal way it just uh, like pushes down on, on this bottom a little too much when you flip it up it kind of moves away just makes it easier there we go that's that's the uh that's the valve that co that comes on these and so you can shut it on and off seems like it still works so it should be good to go Let's go over and see if the parts that I bought are gonna fit and work correctly. All right, so we've got our spigot. It's got a cap on the end, which we'll save. Now, what I'm gonna to add to this, my original plan was to add a bunch of parts and reduce this all the way down to like a garden hose size. And then I thought, why take so long to fill something up when I've already got this big, you know, opening here? Why go all the way down to the size of a garden hose? So I decided not to do that. So here's what I bought. A few different parts, didn't add up to a whole lot, uh, but I think it'll work the way we need it to work. The first is just a coupling that will screw right on to what is already here. And good, it actually screwed on. I forgot to take this along when I went to the store, so then I had to hope that I remembered what size everything was. So it looks like that screws on just fine. And then I bought another coupling that will go on there and then I bought this rubber coupling to go on there loosen that up a little bit and get it on a little better all right I'm gonna tighten it back up so it makes a good seal perfect and then I bought this length of vinyl tubing. This is one and a quarter inch vinyl tubing that I think this will tighten right onto. Yep, perfect. Look at that. Don't you love it when things just work out the first time? Especially when you didn't really have a whole lot of a plan to start with. So now we've got this whole nice assembly here that we can screw back onto our water tank. And I think that this will be perfect for filling up the cow waterer. The cow waterer is right near the fence. So I should be able to pull up with the tractor, put this over and just open it up and fill it up. 
Let's put this back on and then we'll fill up the water tank. Her trough isn't empty right now, but we'll put some in there. We'll take it over and give it a try. Now this is an example of how projects don't need to be very time consuming and don't need to cost a lot. Sometimes just doing something simple works really well. So let's, hopefully it works really well. Let's go give it a try. All right, let's put this whole thing back onto the water tank now. Now my plan is that I will not be keeping water in this tank. We'll just fill it when we need to go take water to the cow. That way the water won't freeze inside the tank. We do keep a hose inside the well house and we have a heat lamp in there, heat, just a light bulb in there that keeps things from freezing. So, so we'll have a hose that we can run out, you know, for a couple minutes to fill this up. And then, you know, if we end up not using it all in the cow water when we get back or whatever, we'll just empty it out so, then, so there's no water in here at all. That's why I said I would hang on to this cap that was on here as well. My plan is that in between uses, I'll actually take off this piece that we made today and put this in the well house too so that if there's any water in there, it doesn't freeze and crack or anything like that. And then I'll just put this cap back on until the next time we need to use it. So for now, let's put this on. We'll flip the tank back on its side. Now, I've already cleaned this tank out, so I know it's clean inside. All right, let's tip it over and we'll fill it up with probably 20 gallons of water or so and take it over and see if it works to fill up the cow water. All right, we'll let that fill up about a quarter of the way or so, and then we'll take it over. All right, I filled it up to just a little bit above this mark right here. So I don't know how many gallons that is, but it'll be a good test. So I'm gonna go get the tractor and we'll take it over and we'll see if it works. All right, so I've already decided, I only moved it about 20 feet, but I already decided I'm gonna ratchet strap it to the tractor as well, because it did kind of tip forward a little bit, made me a little nervous. All right, that makes me feel a little better. Well, I would say that worked out just about perfect. Let's open it up and see how it works for filling up the trough. Awesome. And that will fill it a lot faster than just if I reduced it down to the size of a garden hose. I know it still takes a while to fill up over at the well house, but this is going to save us a lot of time over just coming with so many buckets. Well, I guess I actually brought too much water. Well, I would say that that was a simple but an extremely useful project done. Now we can move on to the other things that we have to do today. There's two more things that I want to do. The first is I've taken some of your advice on our duck house that we're building and I actually went out and I bought some pressure treated two by eights to put underneath around the edge. So I'm gonna to try to jack it up with my farm jack and slide those underneath and then set it back down. And after we get that done, I'm gonna start putting the roof on. I'm hopefully hoping to get both of those things completely done today. Well, the second project that we're gonna to try to get done today is jacking up the duck house and getting those uh, pressure treated pieces of two by eight underneath. I'm hoping I can use my farm jack to jack this up. If you don't know what a farm jack is, it's just basically a very heavy duty jack that can lift things that are pretty heavy. So I'm hoping I can get it somehow in there with the pallets and be able to lift up one side at a time. I think we'll start with the front and the back 
and then we'll do the sides. So let's go in and see if we can get it to work. Well, I was thinking about trying to jack it up from down here, but because these are two separate pallets, I'm not exactly sure what that would do. I might try to get it all the way up here where at least this two by four is solid all the way across. I'm just not sure if my jack is going to be tall enough to do that. I think I'll have to see if I can set the jack up on something that'll give me a few more inches and then we'll see if that'll work. All right, I brought in a block of wood to set the jack up on. Now, it's just a matter of seeing if this will work. see it kind of moved a little bit that makes me nervous but let me see if I can get it get that board underneath well it's under it's not quite as far as I would have liked it to be but hopefully it will work I might at some point take like my sledgehammer and try to pound it under even further for now, I'm going to move to the front and see if I can get the front to do at least as good as this. All right, I got the front section done. I apologize, I forgot to hit record. But I'm not doing over again, just so you guys can see. It went okay. It went about as good as the back. I was actually able to also take my sledgehammer and pound the back in a little bit further, so that's good. Now all I've got left is the sides. I have to measure first to see if I have to cut the ones on the sides. three sides down one to go I don't know if it's going well or not but it's getting done so uh, that's all that matters I do think this is going to help uh, these pallets last a lot longer by having them up off the ground on this treated lumber so thank you guys for pointing that out um, I should have thought of that in the first place but I didn't so I'm glad that you guys did okay one to go well all four sides are done so that's project number two done for the day Let's move on to project number three, which I'm still hopeful we'll be able to get done today, and that's putting the metal roof on this building. Well, the metal roofing that I'm going to use for this actually used to be the roof of our barn. We had it replaced because it's getting pretty rusty and it wasn't really good enough for our barn anymore. But it is fine still for animal pens. So that's what I've been using for a lot of different projects that I have around here. It'll actually be a pretty sad day when it's all gone and then I have to go out and start buying things. But uh, for now, this is what we're using. Now... The two by fours that I ran on the on the duck house are 10 feet long. So I'm actually gonna cut this at 10 and a half. So it hangs over about three inches on the front and the back.
Well, the duck house officially has a roof. That's exciting. I got all of it done. The sun is starting to go down and it's starting to get actually pretty chilly outside. Good thing I've been working hard or otherwise I'd need a lot more than a t-shirt. There's only a couple steps left on this project, putting on a door and then painting it. We'll see if we have time to do that yet this fall. Otherwise, we'll need to do it in the spring. I'm really glad that you guys suggested that we jack it up and put these 2x8s underneath. I know I should have done that in the first place and in my brain it just makes sense. But thank you so much for telling me that that's what we should have done. The metal roof I think turned out really well. I ended up having to put some boards along the front and in the middle and at the back to just make sure that it doesn't bow at all. But I think it turned out really great. We got a lot of big plans for this duck area. You guys have come up with some awesome names. I've got a couple up here that I really like. They're ones that you guys suggested, but I'm not quite ready to pick one yet, so you'll have to wait. I hope you'll keep following along as we build this entire duck area. If you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. The absolute best way that you can support our channel is by sharing our videos with everybody that you know that would love this type of lifestyle. And until next time, thank you guys so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.